like everybody else, I've always heard how amazing Final Fantasy VII is, right? I remember when Final Fantasy VII came out, and I remember seeing it at Blockbuster Video, and I remember everybody talking about that game. And I think I was kind of intimidated by it, because it came out in one of these jewel cases like this, like Star Ocean. It's like a, one of the big multi-disc jewel cases. I don't know how many discs it was. Was it four or six discs for Final Fantasy VII? I, I just felt like it was too big for me to rent and actually get through. I felt like I was gonna have to rent that game like four times. I'm not gonna talk about any story spoilers in this. Just wanna say that up front because I don't wanna spoil it for anybody that's never played it. Because so far, it was three discs? Okay. Because so far, I definitely feel like people should play this game. Even the OG. I know we have the remake, but even if you have played the remake, I think that this original Final Fantasy VII game is worth revisiting. I think it's worth acknowledging the roots of some of these great games that we're enjoying today. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but when you look at like Final Fantasy VII Remake, right? And there's so many people that love it. And there's so many people that, you know, nine out of 10, 10 out of 10. We had somebody in chat a minute ago, masterpiece, right? I think in order to really appreciate some of these games that are remakes that are done so well, it's really important or it's really valuable for you to go back and play the original. And that's why I decided to do this. I could have just played the remake and then got ready for Rebirth, but I wanted to see the roots of this because for me, I've been hearing about Final Fantasy VII my whole life. When Final Fantasy VII came out, I think I was like 12 years old. I think I was like 12 years old. And I love these games. I love Japanese RPG games, JRPGs, action RPGs, turn-based RPGs, uh, things like Octopath Traveler. I know that's current, but you know, Bravely Default, Xenogears, Xenosaga, uh, Saga Frontier, Romancing Saga, Super Mario RPG, Star Ocean, like, I genuinely love these games, and I think that the reason why I love these games so much is because the stories and the characters are so memorable, and I'm just the kind of person that if you tell me a really good story, I'll never forget it. I think that because I'm that kind of gamer, I'm able to go back and play these older games that, you know, maybe they don't hold up so well in terms of like graphics or gameplay, or they're not as accessible, or they're not as you know, evenly paced and things like that. Like these games are known for having terrible difficulty spikes. Old JRPGs are known for that. But I think it's pretty easy for me to go back and play these games and still enjoy them today because I'm really there for the characters and the story and what kind of story you're telling me. And so far, the story of Final Fantasy VII has been fucking amazing. It's been so good. It's so well written. And even though when you look at the game and you can see the graphics and you can tell, yeah, this is, this is an old game, this is a PS1 game. When you read the script, when you go, when you go through the story of it and you meet the side characters and you see their backstories and they start to get fleshed out and these side characters start to have these character arcs, they're so well written that you would not look at the story of Final Fantasy VII and immediately think that's old. That's a 90s game, that's PS1. Because stories, especially good stories, are timeless. And so far, this story really, really holds up. I think it's well-written. I really enjoy the characters. Everybody stands out in your party. You need to care about your party, and everybody in the party needs to have something to do and have a reason to be there and have their own backstory and have something that they're bringing to the table, and I feel that way about everybody in this game. The combat's really good also. It's turn-based, and I could see how maybe in the original it was a little bit slower, but we're playing the PS4 port of Final Fantasy VII. And it has, uh, you know, a couple of like modern features added into it. You can speed the game up three times. You can turn off random battles for a while so you can just do some story content or you have a little bit more control over the grind, which I really appreciate as somebody that loves JRPGs and I do enjoy grinding. But as a streamer, I don't always want to grind. You know, I want to move the story forward for all of us to enjoy the story together. And features like that give me more control over that. And it gives me more control over my experience with the game. I enjoy the the way that magic is handled in the game. I know 8 was kind of controversial with the way it handled magic. And we'll talk about 8 one day. But the way that skills are handled, the way that level up and progression is handled feels really, really good. Do you like the materia system more? I think constantly respecting your materia can be a little tedious. And I think they did some things to mitigate that, like allowing you to move entire lines of materia from one weapon on one character to another weapon on another character. And, uh, you know, for, for anybody that's watching this that doesn't know what materia is, 
it's basically skills and abilities that you can equip to characters by basically slotting it into weapons and in armor like you would in say like a you know diablo putting runes or putting jewels or gems inside of your weapon it's kind of it's kind of like that and it's it's a pretty open system in terms of allowing you to slot anything you want and switch it at any time you want without punishing the player which i really really like it's another thing that kind of keeps characters from feeling locked into like a job system right because instead of having a final fantasy game where you're where these characters in your party all have different classes already assigned to them now they have special abilities that kind of make it clear who's a fighter who's a damage dealer who's a tank who's a ranged character who's a healer right but using the materia system you can you can take a character that like Aerith for instance, who's, you know, kind of looked at more as a healer, I think. I use her more as a healer. She has great healing abilities with her limit breaks, but you can also make her a really uh, good magic damage dealer. You can augment her in ways that make her useful outside of just healing, and I appreciate that. What about uh, the graphics? Well, it's a PS1 game. It looks like a PS1 game. It's, it's obviously upscaled on the PS5. I think what's important is the art direction, the soundtrack, and how well the art direction and the soundtrack set the mood for the game and the art direction and the soundtrack for this game is superb this game does a fantastic job of taking you from highs to lows like that and it's it's not too fast but there's like a flow it's like a roller coaster but a well paced roller coaster if that makes sense it's like a well-paced roller coaster where you have these moments where the writing and the music come together in this like really cheerful way it's wholesome the 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 script is great the writing is great the characters are having some interesting funny banter and uh they're they're, they're joking with each other and it's just like you know it's just fun and light-hearted and then this game can turn right around you can leave one area of the game and you go through a quick loading screen and you're on you're in a different room or you're in a different map or you're going into a boss fight or whatever it is and all of a sudden the art direction changes the music changes and it just resets the mood like that and things can get so heavy and the vibe yeah the vibe and the tonal shift absolutely the vibe and the tonal shift happens like that and all of a sudden things can get really heavy and really serious and really sad sometimes because the music and the art accentuates that and then the script is so good i think it makes it easier for you as a player to go on that roller coaster to go on that ride when the game wants to take me up and take me high i go and when the game brings me down i come you know what i'm saying pause let me let me rephrase that um when, when the <laughs> I think the last thing I want uh, I want to just talk about is the characters. There's a lot of memorable characters in Final Fantasy as far as the franchise goes, but consistently, the most consistent names I hear is Cloud, Tifa, Aerith, Barrett, and uh, Sephiroth, and I've always kind of wondered why. As I'm playing this game, I think I'm beginning to understand why. I think it has to do with the writing, which I've already gone over, so I'm not going to go over that more, but the writing for each character is done so well and they're fleshed out really well i also think that this game does something really smart in terms of mystery in terms of the pacing of giving like drip feeding information and uh resolving conflict and things like that it's it's doled out to the to the player at a really good pace where you're constantly curious about what's going on but at the same time immersed in what's going on i think it does a really good job of keeping you hooked on these characters caring about their relationships caring about whether or not they're safe or in danger like right now today Aerith has you know gone off in search of uh you know sephiroth or in search of you know the 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 what is it the promised land or something like that and sephiroth might confront her and we're gonna try to chase down Aerith and try to save her and i'm deeply invested in what's gonna happen i think the way that it's written and the mystery around the characters and their relationships is what is ultimately going to make these characters worth talking about years later um obviously i still have to see how the story wraps up i i need to see like the fate of these characters and everything and how how the story resolves itself but 
the story has been so good so far that I have total confidence in the way that this is going to resolve itself. Again, I'm 22 and a half hours into Final Fantasy VII, guys, and I have been hooked on these characters in this story the whole way. I don't think after all of these hours, Square is going to drop the ball on this game. I'm really interested to see where the story goes from here, the character development on my party in Sephiroth, where that goes from here, and I'm really, really interesting, interested to see how all of this translates to the remake, which we're going to play right after we finish Final Fantasy VII.